Good evening and welcome to Mum, Makuna and Maui. And uh, welcome to uh, another Monday night conference. Today we're up to seminar number 16. The date is June the 13th, 2011. Let's get going. Uh, so the espionage becomes an art form when you have huge patterns and you're responsible for the whole global theater, which is often what the White House is, at least being the cop for the global theater. They have to look at these movements and all these different uh, worlds and industries and societies across the planet. You, it would be natural to say, okay, we'll tell these people that, that's all they need to know, and we'll tell that industry over there what they need to know. And so giving out information becomes a programmed, very rigorous, controlled thing. Giving out information and disinformation. Yeah, on the, on the big, big scale patterns, like the White House, we're all waiting for the White House to announce whether the UFOs have landed or not, or whether we've had alien contact. We're waiting for the Pope to uh, agree or disagree. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting though that in that article he doesn't say counter espionage is an art form. He just keeps it at the level of uh, espionage. Right. So I don't know whether that's implied. But... So here's, here you have McLuhan in, in Understanding Media talking about the real meaning of art, what it really shows you, that it's healthy, it's necessary for the nutrition of the society, it's giving the effects of what's coming before it arrives for most people. So he says that the whole art establishment, which includes the collectors and the buyers, they ruin art by turning it into baubles for museum, little things to buy and collect, and you miss the meaning of what the artists are picking up. So the artist becomes wealthy, so he becomes bourgeois and forgets about whatever pissed him off that made him make the art in the first place. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, so you got McLuhan noticing, uh, Nelson Rockefeller is confirming, at least jokingly, uh, that suspicion about the art collector. Okay, and, and of course, you can go back to the Museum of Modern Art and, um, and uh, the Whitney and the Guggenheim. These museums start after the crash of 1929, when money, pri the private ownership of money is gone, so now the public owns money through the welfare state being built around the world in the 30s. The wealthy people, who represent the time when you could have private ownership of money, they have to shift a value hierarchy uh, to another level, and they shift it to museums. And you have Peggy Guggenheim, not that she personally was motivated, but she's running around mixing it up with all the radical artists and gathering the stuff, which eventually becomes the Guggenheim Museum. And then you have uh, the Museum of Modern Art done by the Rockefellers. They're making an experience. The Gutenberg art, that experience, as a valuable archetype, as a gold standard for prestige and status. And what's interesting is that Something happened in the 60s that threatened the role of that kind of art, Gutenberg art. Now, Andy Warhol said that, um, he wrote later in the 70s that, in the 60s, everybody came together, all levels of society, and, and had a big party. And then he said in the 70s, everybody dropped everybody. Everybody scattered from the party. So the collective effects of the satellite were disintegrated by the 70s me decade, which was that caused by the, the coming uh, digital media, or was that the actual do your own thing effect of the satellite flowing around the planet? And it was ground in the 60s, so everybody became corporate tribal, this kind of uh, mishmash, marsh pit in the, in the 60s, miming the effect of television in the 50s, not knowing that the results of the actual 60s caused by the satellite would lead to the three decade of the 70s and the fragmentation of any of those group movements. Uh, definitely the 60s were seen as favoring the left and the 80s favored the right. So, uh, so Rockefeller is saying something interrupted that space. And you know, you know, Jerry, that's what a lot of the Generation X and the later generations, they, they have a fascination about the 60s it might be that very point that the hierarchy of information and of art lost its hold when everybody got involved in the TV effect, which was the uh, emotion of multitude. That's uh, Marshall saying that when we went to college in the 60s, we substituted our TV watching experience uh, of LSD with the new TV. Right. So you, so you have... So the, the point is that the whole... The whole blur of art being a specialist activity that represented a hierarchy 
in the 40s and 50s that Rockefeller paid for, the actual art, art environment was television because it got superseded by the satellite environment, making the old environment art form. The, the books and movies and Gutenberg artifacts are too old to be the art form, so TV, it's general merging of um, viewer and screen, and of course, if you don't have it, you take drugs, you get the TV effect. That is what's going on in the 60s. But what's interesting, it's going to be temporary because the digital phase will retrieve private autonomy, at least a patina of it, and, and uh, isolating from the TV effect. So this is the problem is that when people talk about art collapsed in the 60s, and even Nelson Rockefeller says it, they're not saying it as clearly as you can with McLuhan's language of what, why it did, why Andy Warhol in the 70s became a super businessman selling to the Rockefellers and everybody, uh, which is not the case in the factory in 1965-66. It was because the technology changed. So then espionage is simply um, Nelson Rockefeller hanging out with the artists to see what he could do.